Ephesians 5 and 1 is our core scripture, and it reads, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. That's our core scripture that we're going to use for the remaining part of this series. Uh, imitate God. I need y'all to learn that. Imitate God, therefore, in everything we do. Imitate means to do what God does, right? In this year of demonstration and in this season of doing, we're imitating God. We're doing what God would do. We're doing what God declares that we shall do. So our focus is becoming kingly aware. And I want to be very clear with that. King, not in the sense of masculinity. I ain't talking about a gender and a male. So you don't have to change it and make it feminine to a queen. I'm talking about a status that God gave each of us when he placed the kingdom inside of us. Becoming kingly aware that we would reign like royalty. I want you to lay hands on yourself. Say, there's a king in me. I told you I need your participation today. You have to prophesy to yourself. We're so used to other people calling us out and telling us who we are and pointing us out. Lay hands on yourself and you got a decree. Some of y'all didn't do it. There is a king in me. When you realize that God placed a kingdom inside you, it's not so hard for you to understand that with every kingdom comes a king. You need to understand that. So we talk about kingdom conscious, okay? Being aware of the kingdom that's inside of each of us, that God placed in us. Kingdom conscious is the state of being spiritually alert, being aware, paying attention, knowing what is going on, knowing how to live and walk in the supernatural is to be kingdom conscious. Does this make sense so far? With kingdom conscious comes understanding the purpose of the kingdom of God. When you're kingdom conscious, you realize that there are two worlds that exist. But the kingdom of God as believers is where our power resides. It is where government resides. Does this make sense to you? Kingdom of God contains everything we need as believers. But our battle, and this is our battle, you got to understand that Satan created a kingdom kingdom also. He tries to compete with God. He's not God's competition. He's not even your competition. But he tries to make you feel that he competes with you and that you have to battle him. So he created his own kingdom, which is called the kingdom of this world. But people who are conscious and aware and alert of God's power and authority, they operate under the kingdom of God. And what does that mean? They take God at his word, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of how they feel, what they've come up against, because I do. I, I, I promise, I decree that as soon as you make a, a, a commitment to something, it seems like everything that, that I mean, am I talking to somebody? As soon as you say, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, it seems like everything comes against you to stop you from accomplishing what it is that you said. So here it is in week one, we started talking about lawbreakers. Am I, I, I must, are y'all still with me? That is to move beyond your feelings. And this is where you draw the line. You say, I refuse to labor in what was already given to me in the kingdom. That's what week one dealt with. We are defying the laws of limitation. I need you to say that. I'm defying the laws of limitations. Because when you're not a lawbreaker, you are bound by whatever society says you shall be. Whatever your situation say or, or whatever circumstances are in your life is where you will Will reside if you don't become conscious and aware that there is greater for you. Week two, we talked about I got this. This is when we started challenging your mind. When you're kingdom conscious, not only are you a lawbreaker, but you think differently. You don't think like everybody else. You understand that supernaturally, you say, I can access things in a different realm by my faith. I think differently, therefore I behave and I act and respond differently. The natural conscious part tries to counteract that. The natural part of us tries to fight that so that we don't operate supernaturally. It wants us to depend on our feelings. It wants us to depend on our issues and emotions. We all got feelings. Come on. We all got feelings. And so that ram tries to get us dependent so that we will respond based on how we feel. Does that make sense? 
kingdom people, this is what happens when you become conscious, aware, conscious with a K. Uh, I did that on purpose, and I have to say that every week because I don't want y'all sending us emails about we spell conscious wrong. We did that on purpose. But kingdom conscious people live in, in, in the supernatural. To them, the supernatural is a necessity. It is not an option. It is necessary for me to walk and to live supernaturally. It's necessary for me to see God beyond what other people can see. It's necessary for me to know what God says about a situation. That's what happens when we begin to think differently. Why? Because it makes sense now that Satan wants to fight us because he knows that there's a kingdom inside us. We have ability to rule. He doesn't want us to rule. He starts messing with our minds because if you got your mind, you won't rule right. You won't even use the authority that you have when he starts messing with your mind. So he keeps coming after us. Are y'all following me? so far. So his goal is to infuse deception, to deceive us, to remove God from our minds. He doesn't want us to think about God. He wants us to think about ourselves. He wants us to think about life and our issues so that we're only left with the natural part of us. But what happens when we make a decision? You say, I'm going to be kingdom conscious. I'm going to keep my mind on the things of God. I know Satan is trying to dominate me, but there's a call on my life as a kingdom with inside me to dominate him and to take back the territory of my mind. Can we talk about this? Because he wants to consume my mind, so my job is to take it back. How do I do that? The first thing I said last week is I started thinking differently. I started thinking differently. Also, we speak differently. We believe differently. Is that correct? And we respond differently. So this week, I want to talk about our speaking ability because I realize sometimes we're too quiet. As I said, I told you early on to say, I can and I will. That's our, that's our topic for tonight. I need you to say that again. I can and I will. By the time we get to the end, you'll understand why you have have to say it. I know sometimes it's so difficult us, for us to say stuff if we really don't believe it. Y'all looking at me side eye today, but you know I came heavy with word though, because I don't like the way y'all be looking at me. But I brought the word today so y'all could be mad with the word. But here it is. It's hard to say it when you don't see tangibly how it's going to happen, because you almost feel like you lying. So we try to help God out and be quiet and just nod our head and just say, God, know my heart. But there's some things you got to say. There's some things you have to open your mouth to shift and to cause some changes. There's some victories you can't get quiet with your mouth closed. Oh, y'all not hearing me. There's some things we have not received because we simply have just stopped talking about it. So here it is. Let me slow down. Y'all ain't gonna work me today. So here it is. Genesis 1 and two, I want you to get out because the first thing I want you to know is that words have transformative power. So why is this important? Words have transformative power. Satan wants us to be quiet, to stop talking because words can transform. And if you don't believe me, we're going to go to Genesis 1 and we'll start at 2. It says, now the earth was formless and a void and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters and God said it didn't say God thought it it didn't say he waved his hand and God said so if God has to say some things to bring forth transformation because y'all look right over that it was nothing it was formless it was void it had no purpose it had no goal and God had to say what it need to become and we quiet up in here see I told y'all looking at me that's okay it says and God said 
Let there be light, and there was light. It didn't say it almost came. It, it didn't say he prayed about it. None of that. He spoke it. And what did I tell you? Imitate God. See, we act like we don't understand. There's some things that are dark. There's some things that are void. They don't have shape in our lives, and you ain't talking to it. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to talk to that thing. So here it is, uh, that words frame our world. And not only did God give us the perfect example of what's required to make some things happen, there's some transformations we want to experience, we want to see, and it really is connected to our ability to say a thing. I know we, we probably repeat what the worship leader says, but I'm going to tell you why it's not working, because sometimes you put it out there and it doesn't work, and then you feel like you've made a fool of, but uh, words framed our world, just like God released this word and light came forth. Hebrews 11.3, I got a lot of word for y'all today, so y'all can't be cute looking at me. I need y'all to write this word down so that it can get in your belly. Hebrews 11.3, uh, and I'm going to just do the first part of that, says, By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. If God can frame our world, and there's a king in me, there's a kingdom in me, if I'm imitating God, can I frame my world by my words? Can I change some things by what I speak? Y'all, like y'all don't believe it. It ain't just believing in my head, having the ability to release. Lisa said the world was framed by his word. Can I walk a little further? Because y'all still don't seem persuaded. But word gives us life. I'm trying to tell you why the enemy wants you quiet. So he aggravates you and he irritates you so that you will get quiet and that you will just go within yourself. And you think, I took my toys and I'm going to go home. I ain't going to play with them no more. I ain't going to say nothing else. But all he did was got you to be on his side. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Because he knows if you don't use your words for God, you're going to use your words for him. He knows your words going to do something. Your words got power. So it's going to be on one side or the other. So his job is to get you to speak and help build his kingdom. That's okay. So let's go to Matthew 4. Um, Matthew 4 and 4. Can I walk a little bit more in this? Can I? I feel this. I feel like breaking some curses up in here. Oh, we've been speaking some things. Uh, we've been gossiping in the heavenlies. And I ain't talking about gossip about people. Gossip is talking about things that really don't concern you. What does that mean? You've been repeating things the enemy been telling you. You've been repeating things. That's gossip, y'all. I need y'all to hear that. God ain't tell you to say that. You've been repeating some things. Him telling you you defeated. You ain't going to win. You ain't going to get out of this. You going to lose your mind. And you crazy enough to say, I'm about to lose my mind. You gossiping all up in the heavens. Repeating stuff that you don't know nothing about. So here it is. Matthew 4 and 4. It said, it is written. Man should not live by bread alone. It ain't just about what we eat, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He says your strength, everything that you are, comes in the form of word. Every person that you desire to be comes in the form of word. You cannot exist outside of word. I'm trying to tell you the power in the word. God used it to shape you, to build you, and then he gave you the power to use it, to change and to shift and to line up with his purpose and will are y'all getting this and so here it is he says imitate me I want you to do everything that I've done he says everything that you've seen I want you to imitate you ain't got to try to create nothing new you ain't got to try to come up with this in your mind do everything that I told you to do he says because when you do that creative power is going to come upon you to fulfill every plan why because the bible said Luke 1 and 30 I'm trying not to get excited, but this is why I start talking the way God talk for no word from God will fail. See, y'all don't know it. That's why you're talking your talk. I ain't talking my talk no more. I need you to look at somebody and say, I speak kingdom. See, 
see, I know I need y'all to look at him. I speak kingdom. See, I start sounding different when I speak kingdom. I don't talk defeat. Don't, I don't tell myself what I can't have. I don't tell myself where I can't go. I speak kingdom. I can and I will because I speak at a different level. Don't tell me what I can't do. Don't tell me what I can't accomplish. Don't tell me what I can't overcome. I can and I will. I can and I will. Now, I mean, speaking of this of myself, see, people call that cocky. You know, they'll say, you, 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 that's a little cocky. You need to be humble. I am being humble. Humble is doing whatever God said. Humility is doing what he told me to do and do it the way he told me to do it. Humility means I ain't even dependent on myself. He said, I want you to copy me. This is the right time that you can copy God. People don't want you to copy them. They get mad. They say, stop copying everything I do. Stop wearing everything I do. God say, copy me. He said, I want you to copy me. I want you to do exactly what I've done because that is where your release is going to come. Now, here it is at this level. Kingdom requires us to move from spectating to demonstrating. We've been talking about the year of demonstration. We don't got quiet already and we ain't even in the march yet. I ain't heard no more testimonies because you get bored, you get tired. Your spirit needs to be in expectancy. When you are aware, you are alert. Everything that God does, everything that he does in your life around you through you points back to him we have to be aware and pay attention so that we can respond accordingly you said I'm no longer spectating I ain't on the sideline looking I'm a part in the game I'm in the game I'm helping to make it happen come on now I'm helping to make this happen so I can be on the sideline people on the sideline always want to tell people in the game what to do until they behind get in the game It always seemed easy. Them game shows, I love game shows. We could be at home, get all the answers. You're like, you should have said this, but when it's your turn, you want to freeze up. I can and I will. Kingdom conscious people have one language. We have one language. We speak kingdom. The problem is we got too many bilingual believers. They speak flesh and they speak spirit. We speak one language. Y'all one with me today. See, the language is different at this level. People who don't, they, people down here won't understand you. You say, I'm talking different at this level. I speak kingdom. I am fluent in kingdom. Are we getting this today? So here it is. Can I go a little bit further? So words bring forth promises. Words bring forth promises. We spend our times on the sideline waiting for the promise to be revealed. But there's an issue that happens. Sometimes whatever you release will delay your promise. And that's what I was talking about last week when Numbers, the 13th chapter, when the children of Israel were on the brink of the promise. They had a clash of words. They had a good report that versus a bad report. A delay came because they chose to believe the bad report. I want you to understand that sometimes you will delay your own promise by what you speak. You blaming Satan, but Satan said, all you did was build my kingdom because he can't create anything. I need y'all to get this. So he uses our words. He can't even make us say or do anything. He uses our words. And just like they decided they wanted to believe the negative report, they spoke defeat. Did I not tell you that last week that they said we are not able? We are like grasshoppers. And so that negative report became toxic throughout the entire nation and their promise was delayed they missed it over a word see y'all getting this you think it's over a circumstance but it's over a word that's some things you need to go back and get it it's waiting on your voice it's waiting on your voice for you to call some things back into existence. So you've been sitting quiet because you're scared to say it in case it don't happen. But it's just waiting there for your voice. It's waiting for you to decree it and to bring it forth. Are y'all with me today? 
Y'all still looking at me side eye online. I hope y'all with me because they acting like they ain't flowing with me in the house. So I'm going to preach to y'all online. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 at 2, 12 through 13. And, and we're going to walk this word just a little bit more. And I want you to understand the power of your words to bring forth the promise. Stop begging for what you already have. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 says, and we have received God's spirit. Didn't he tell us that? I told you week one that there was a transfer. Did I tell y'all that? There was a transfer. We had to make an exchange, right? To take on the spirit of his son, to be transferred into the kingdom of his son. And we have received God's spirit and it says not the world's spirit in case you are confused so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us when we tell you these things we do not use words come on now from human wisdom say you can't study this you can't learn this in college you can't even make this up in your mind instead we speak words given to us by the spirit did y'all get that there's some things you have to speak that are given by the Spirit. So you're trying to say what other people said when it worked for them. That's not going to work for you. You got to use the words given to us by the Spirit. Using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. Are we getting this today? But the issue is Satan is counting on you. I want you to lay hands on yourself and say Satan is dependent on me. What he wants us to do, he has a kingdom also that is built by words just like God. But see, God framed our world. Satan cannot create. So what he does, he snatches those words that we put in the atmosphere that are hanging in the balance. See, they aren't quite in the supernatural realm. They're almost there, but they're in the natural realm. So he snatches them because if we don't get what we think we should get, doubt comes in and we start to speak the opposite of what we have released. Your words are going to, I'm trying to tell you, your words are going to shape something. They're going to create something. So he uses our words against us. He's depending on us. He uses our words to enhance his kingdom because he said, I can't make nothing. So I have to use what they put out there. So I'll wait until they are discouraged. I'll wait until they are doubting. I'll wait until they are confused. And then I'll snatch those words that they once lifted to God and they decreed and they shouted and danced. And I'll wait till fear get in and I'll wait till disappointment get in until they start saying, well, maybe it ain't from me or maybe it's not God's will for me well maybe I ain't supposed to have it or maybe this right here is God's plan he just waits until we start changing our testimonies and he starts to build his kingdom that is how he becomes stronger and stronger are we understanding this today so here it is that Satan is banking on our words let's go to Matthew 12 and 36 because y'all looking like no we can just you know I didn't really say anything I want you to know every word that you say has a divine purpose in it every word Matthew 12 and 36 I know you ain't know this right here it says but every word manifests your world everything that you say helps to shape and create your world because you have creative ability right so here it is that it says, but I say to you that every idle word that man speaks, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. So you thought I was just talking, I'm playing, I'm joking, I ain't really mean it. Every idle word that we speak, why? Because he says you are helping to equip the opposer. When you put those words out there and you don't mean it, they don't have any fire behind it. It has no purpose behind it. It has no spirit behind it. It is an idle word that Satan uses against you and against his kingdom. I need y'all to get this. See, you, uh, you said, I don't really mean, I'm just saying I was upset. See, I know people say I was upset and I said and I threw a tantrum, but all you doing is building Satan's kingdom. Oh, can you imagine that you giving it for the other side? Oh, with your preaching, praying, prophesying, laying hands, speaking in tongues, slaying self. You are helping to build his kingdom with your unbelief. You Every time you open your mouth and you say something that doesn't line up with God. I know y'all don't like this today. 
I know y'all don't like this today, but I'm trying to help you understand what it is you're really up against because I know when you put it out there, you said I'm scared to say it because it doesn't always come to pass. But it says every idle word that man speak, that he will give an account of it in the, in the day of judgment. For by your words, this is my favorite part, you will be justified uh, and, and, and by your words you will be condemned. So it's your choice. Either you will be saved saved by your words or you will be condemned by your words it's one or two things there ain't no ain't nothing in the middle so you either i'm speaking damnation on myself or i'm speaking healing and deliverance and freedom but the choice is really up to me i can and i will so i start changing my language because i understand i don't want to be rooting for the other side i don't want to be building the other side i don't want to be creating my own opposition some of the stuff you fighting you you created it. Your words will save you or they will condemn you. And the Bible is very clear. I'm going to shift a little bit here. We love to use this passage about decreeing. Uh, I got anybody in here, y'all heard that we like to decree a thing, right? Say it back to me. We decree in what? Come on, talk to me. We, we what? Okay, the word, the Bible doesn't say that. I'm going to tell you what happens. We, we take on these terms and these words, and we start adjusting. But that's not what the Bible says. Let's go to Job 22 and 28. I'm going to help you why some of the stuff you aren't getting, because we're not even speaking Bible. It, it told us to imitate God. And some of this stuff we imitate in man. He didn't say decree and declare. He didn't tell, and I'm going to help you out because, see, we probably don't even understand why that is so important. Because it seems so small and minute, right? It's seem like a little thing but I want you to understand that a decree is an official order issued by legal authority so the Bible said that thou shalt decree a thing comma and it shall be established unto thee it didn't say nothing about declare why because a declaration come on people a declaration is simply an acknowledgement of what is going on or something that is we write down declarations but declarations don't need authoritative backing, but a decree does. So God said everything that has to happen in the earth has to have legal backing. See, y'all quiet. Y'all ain't getting this. So here it is. He says, thou shalt decree a thing. That means you got to open your mouth because you are a king. Kings release decrees. Can I teach this? He says, because you are a king, there's a king in you. There's some things you can release by your mouth, some decrees, and it shall be established because the king of kings is going to back everything that you put in the atmosphere. Oh, come on, tell your neighbor, heaven is backing me. Heaven is backing me. So you can't be afraid to talk. He says, I told you to make a decree. And in order for it to be official, it has to be executed by somebody with legal authority. That's why everybody can't decree. I know in their prayers, we declare and we decree in the name of Jesus. Uh, and they still defeated. Why? Because they have no legal authority. See, I can decree all day long that the, that the uh, speed limit is going to be 95. I don't have the authority to change the speed limit but I have the authority to shift some things in my own life so you got to know what's your playground I need you to look around your seat oh I could decree that I could decree that right there there's some things in your life that you do have authority over that you aren't using because you didn't even realize that you had the authority to do so are y'all hearing me today so here it is, the person issuing the decree must have the authority to pronounce the order. They can't even say it. Don't you know even those who are next to the king can't decree nothing because they don't have the authority behind it. When you realize that God is backing you, that heaven, you won't be afraid to say it. You won't be afraid to open your mouth and speak the truth of who you are and what you really want out of life. But Satan has made us scared. He makes us quiet. He tells us to pray in our heads. 
He tells us to speak some things in our head. And we even get to this place that we, we receive God's spirit by osmosis. We don't shift no things anymore with the voice. We're the only creation with the voice. We're the only creation that can frame. We're the only creation that can shape. And so we don't use the weapon of our voices to make some atmosphere changes. We get in our heads and say, God, read my mind as if he is a genie. Are y'all hearing me today? We treat him like we need him to do for us what he has already given us the ability to do. Oh, let me slow it down here. I can and I will. Without the authority, a decree is worthless. Without authority, a decree is worthless. You can have people screaming at the top of their lungs. They can shout, they can cry, they can speak in tongues. But unless they have the authority behind it, a decree doesn't mean anything. God said, I gave you this weapon. Believers, I gave you this. Be kingdom conscious. Be aware that as you're walking through life, you have the ability to call some things that are not as though it was. He said, but you too quiet and you're dealing with some things that you don't have to deal with you're aggravated by some things you don't have to be aggravated by you ain't got to get mad over that speak to that thing I need you to back up off me now I need you to leave me alone I don't have time to be dealing with it but you scared you know you scared and I tell you what that thing is like a bully I don't know if you've ever been bullied before but if you've ever been on a bus and you caught the bus in the hood and they start cracking on you playing the dozen and you scared to talk Talk back because you don't know what's going to happen. That's what the enemy does. He treats you just like that. He's a bully. He says, if I can get you quiet, I can talk about you enough to make you feel bad. I can talk about you and aggravate you enough to make you cry, to make you sit there and not know who your God is. He says, I'm going to just keep talking about you. You're just going to sit there until the tears start falling silent. You can't open your mouth and use the weapon that God gave you and say, I'm about to come upside your head. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me today. Day. let me calm down let me calm down I can and I will I can and I will so you'll get it in a minute your attitude changes I told you I speak different I speak a different language I speak kingdom I can't don't tell me what I can't have I don't care what the interest rate is don't tell me what I can't have don't tell me what my credit like don't tell me what I can't have See, you're too scared to do it. You go and ask these people, can I have this? You don't understand who my daddy is. Everything belongs to him. I am fully aware and alert that I am a king's kid. You don't understand. I ain't got to beg. I ain't got to plead. I ain't got to play small because I know who I am in God. I can and I will. Let me bring this on in. Uh, I'm about to close this right now. A decree is worthless without authority. The beautiful thing about it is that we know that God is backing us. This ain't cockiness. This ain't about, I think I'm the person doing it. I know I'm not the person doing it. But I know that there's a king in me. There's a kingdom in me. And because of that, I have the ability and the authority to do some things. Philippians 4 and 13, we like to quote this, I can can do all things. Come on and say it with me. Through Christ that what? We like to say it, but we don't believe it. So when your mindset changes, you say, I can and I will. See, this right here doesn't matter what comes up against me. You might be bigger than me. See, I told you I've come up against some pretty big ones, y'all. I have, but in my mind, you can't tell me. I ain't no grasshopper. I don't see myself small. I can and I will. See, sometimes you just got to get in their head. Y'all don't believe this today. Sometimes you just need to get in your enemy head. He can start thinking twice about, you know, I don't know. I, I, I was going to, I don't know if I should bother her. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm all up in your head now. I'm all up in your head. You came up and bothered me talking about what you're going to do. You got to have that attitude. I can and I will. All things are possible to them that believe. Come on. I need you to speak up. I need y'all to get this today. I want you to look at your neighbor. Say, speak up. So heaven can unlock your resources. Speak up. Yo, y'all ain't talking. Say, don't get quiet now. See, y'all quiet. Don't get quiet now. See, the way we used to do it in the hood, you be talking all that junk until they call you to the carpet, and then you want to get quiet. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't get quiet now. Open, speak up so heaven can unlock your resources. Speak up. 
I need us to get this. Mark the 11th chapter. I'm almost done. Mark the 11th chapter. I need y'all to understand this, that we're in a position to decree. We're in a position. Now, when we say decree something, that ain't a magic word. It is not the word decree. It is the power behind what it is you are releasing. So it is not a magic word. You can't just throw it out there, like put a little something on it, okay? It ain't no pole. You can just throw some money on it. That's not what decreeing is all about. Oh, I need y'all to understand this today. So here it is, Mark 11 and 23 is very clear. When you're in a position to decree, you realize that your mouth and you have the power to change and to shift. I don't care how bad the situations are. It says, for verily I say unto you that whatsoever you say unto this mountain, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in thy heart, but shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass shall believe those things which he saith. We skate right over that, underline it, highlight it, something, everything that you believe, I believe it, so I say it. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Did it say he shall have whatever he believeth? I need y'all to read this. What does it say? He shall have whatsoever he Come on, he shall have whatever he why aren't we talking? We got to talk. I can and I will. It's what I say. See, he doesn't want me to talk. That's why people hurt your feelings. So you will stop talking. As they try to shut you down. So you stop talking. Satan wants you to stop talking because he realized if you realize you got power, you might start speaking the right thing. So he can't take the risk with you. Are y'all getting this today? So here it is that he says we cannot live outside. I'm over my time. Give me a, a couple more minutes. He says that you cannot be outside of the kingdom and speak supernatural release. We try to cause a crossover. We want to stay in the natural things and decrease supernaturally, but we can't do that. We understand that the promise is ripe and ready. I need y'all to get this. The promise is ripe and ready, but we have to be bold enough to take it. We we got to be bold enough to get it and not and not act like we have to wait. I ain't got to wait for it. I ain't got to wait for somebody's permission to say I am the one. I ain't got to wait for somebody to point me out and say, yes, I believe in you. The promise is ripe. I'm ripe and ready. Y'all might not be ripe and ready. Are y'all understanding this today? I want you to tell your neighbor, keep talking. Proverbs 18 and 21, I told you a lot of scriptures today, says uh, death and life are where? Death and life. We like to quote that where? In the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Your tongue has so much authority. You can speak life. Stop accepting all of this defeat of what you cannot have access to. Every bad report, death and life rest in the power of your tongue. This is the last thing I'm going to give you. I want you to go to Matthew 8, 23, and, and we're going to be done today because I need y'all to understand I can't and I will. That's personal. That's a personal decree. You got to say, I can't say it for you. Didn't I say that earlier? I wish I could say it for you. I wish I can lay hands and you receive it. I wish I could wave and you get bonus and authority. But this is so personal today. You have to say this thing to yourself. If a childhood book, if they put it in a book for children, how important do you think it means for you to open your mouth? All the way back to the little engine that could. He kept saying, I think I can, I think I can. He kept going, I know I can, I know I can, I know I will. If that's all the way in a childhood book, why is it that we can't get it even on this side that we have the authority to use our mouth to change and shift our atmosphere? Matthew 8 and 28. This is where Jesus calmed the storm. I'm just going to summarize this. And we like to preach this, but this is something that happened. I want you to understand that every issue in your life, you have the ability to gain control over it. You do. You have ability. You don't have to deal with anything you don't want to deal with. So he says, then he got up into the boat and the disciples followed him. I want you to underline that. Then he got up into the boat and the disciples followed him. So they signed up for this. I need y'all to get this. 
It says, suddenly a furious storm came upon the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up. Lord, save us. We're going to drown. They spoke what? We're going to drown. See, I, I need y'all to get this. The situation sometimes looks so bleak. They look so bad until you start confessing what it is that you see. Now they got Jesus on the boat. Why is it that they didn't even have it in their mind that if Jesus is with us, we're not going to drown? But they spoke this thing. This is what happens in the natural. They were not keenly aware of who was with them. Don't you know that God is with you in every situation you are dealing with right now? Everything that should come against you, you act like you don't know. And so what happens is they, they were like, we're going to drown. We're going to die. He replayed you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and he did what? The Bible said he rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. He talked to the storm. I need you to tell your neighbor, talk to it. Come on, just talk to it. You've been praying forever, laying snotting, just talk to it. Stop laboring over it, just talk to it. Oh, come on, y'all ain't saying, y'all looking at me. See, I know y'all want a magic pill because talking does not connect to your emotions. See, you don't feel it. You don't get the willy willies from that. You got to be able to just stand and look eyeball to eyeball and toe to toe and talk to it. If you want that situation to work out, talk to it. You want that thing to overcome, talk to it. You got to tell it who you are. You got to tell it who your God is. Stop waiting for it to tell you when it's your turn. Oh, y'all feeling me today? You can handle your storm. I can and I will. You can handle your storm. You got to say that I can handle my storm. I don't have to lay here and wait for it to pass by. I'm going to speak to this. I'm going to get up in the middle of it. Can you stand in the middle and decree that this is what God has said? Are y'all getting this today? The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. It is a horrible thing when believers don't even recognize who God is in their storm. I want to challenge you today to be alert, to be keenly aware that he is with you. He is with you every step of the way. And we have the authority to change and to shift by speaking. Don't you know, even he says, they that call upon me. Do we remember that? See, we used to call upon God when we were back, when I first got saved, we called him. I didn't even know why they had us calling him fast and calling him long. But I understand that when we call upon that he will answer. He didn't say, do this in your head by osmosis. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. We got to use our, our weapons, our voices. I can and I will. There are three things I want to give you quickly. Satan is afraid of your speaking power. He is afraid of your speaking power. And this is what I want you to remember. When it comes toe to toe, when you're facing your opposition, when he tells you to stop talking in these situations and you feel like I got to be quiet in this. Number one, you have to meditate and think about what God said. That's the first thing you got to do. He tells us to meditate day and night. He says, I want you to pay attention because you can't imitate me if you don't know what I said. He says, meditate, pay attention. You, my word has to be oozing out of you. And the reason why we give so much of ourselves, we don't have enough word in us. And so the only thing left is us. That's why it's easy for us to release and say some things that are not of God. That's how we get caught up in the realm. Are we getting this today? Number two, we need to speak life. And we declare the word of God. We speak life. You got to say what God says. You got to use the scriptures to say what God says. You said, I'm decreeing it. Don't just put it on your mirror. Don't just write it out. Open your mouth. You'll be amazed what happens in your atmosphere when you start saying it. Start speaking it over your children. Even in your job, you ain't got to yell it. Open your mouth. If you got a horrible atmosphere at your job, start opening your mouth and decreeing difference in here. Holy Spirit, manifest yourself in here. 
Don't play small and you quiet in your cubicle and all hell breaking loose. Do you know who you are? Number three, pray the scriptures. You pray the scriptures. Scriptures, the word of God shapes your world. You can shape, you can change your world, you can change your home, you can change your mind when you get into the word because the word says what God says. We can't give ourselves. We got to say what God says. Does this make sense? It's so easy, and I'm done. I'm way over my time. It's so easy to get accustomed to doing what we always do. And there are so many words that we say haphazardly that we don't realize are shifting our atmosphere. We say really stuff like, this is killing me. Come on, but we're so casual because it's a part of our culture. I was dying. And you don't understand that Satan takes those words because God can't use those. So they're building something. Are we getting this? We got to be aware of the power that's in our mouths. We're not even aware of what we're building and what we're shaping. We're just going through life doing what we do. But I'm shifting some things I can and I will. I can and I will. I don't have to adjust to the pain in my life. I don't have to adjust to the pain in my body. But that's what we do. We don't speak to it. We don't tell it to line up because we're scared it ain't going to work. Or y'all don't want to admit it. We're scared it ain't going to work. We don't have that level of faith. So we walk around handicapped and crippled. He says, there's a king in me. Let's pray. Stand. There's a king in me. I have the authority to make a royal decree. I have the authority to make some changes. I don't have to accept the status quo. Does this make sense? I got to speak differently. I don't want to be li- bilingual. My flesh likes to talk. I don't want to be bilingual. One language. I speak kingdom. And it would be so strange to some people that don't understand kingdom talk. They'll say you're talking foolish. But this is kingdom talk. Even with your friends, I need some people that speak kingdom talk. Don't let me play small. Don't let me be less than I'm supposed to be. Kingdom talk. Even with your children, speak kingdom to them. Stop telling them to call other people. You, you speak it. You say it to them. As I get ready to pray, I was talking to one of my sons today. And um, my son is in corporate America. And he was telling me that He had a goal, something he wanted to accomplish. I'm not going to put it out there. But it's the way he said it. And he said, Mom, have you heard of XYZ? And I I said, yeah, it's, it's a status with business. I said, yeah. And he said, I was thinking that I might want to do that. And quickly I changed his language. I told him this morning, I said, no, say I am going to do it. I said, when you give yourself a way out, you'll take it. You'll take it. But when you put it out there, you say, no, I'm going to do this. I can and I will. But there's some things I can call into existence because God gave me the authority, the authority to do it. Change your language. You want to evolve in ministry? Change your language. You speak it. I can and I will do this. So that's my prayer for you today. I'm going to ask Bishop to come and to pray over us and online. I want to pray with you as well. Thank you. I want to pray with you as well because I realize sometimes it's very difficult for us to voice it. We seem to think that if we're quiet, if we stop talking, that God's going to read our minds. But that's not what he told us to do. We're not designed for him to read our minds. He said, I gave you a voice. We have to use it. Are y'all hearing me today? So as Bishop gets ready to come, the last thing I want to share is I had some, I talked to somebody today that told me um, they were ministering to somebody else. 
and this person wanted to accomplish something with her father. Her father had a medical issue and he was all the way in Miami. And so the young lady felt really defeated trying to go back and forth and say, she said she told her, this is the year of demonstration. And in the year of demonstration, this is what you need to do. You need to say, I want him here. And this is how you do this. And the young lady said, I tried. She said, go again. She said, you don't, you don't go to the light center, don't worry about that. But she says, I'm in the atmosphere and I'm gonna share with you what I got in the atmosphere. So the young lady took her word. She took her what? She took her words. And she used those words and was able to attain what it is she wanted to attain and got her father in Fort Lauderdale. And she called her, she was so excited. Oh my God, it worked. All that is, are y'all getting me? I can and I will. If you don't speak it, some of the things that are not happening is because you aren't speaking. Stop wishing change. Stop hoping change. You got to speak it. You have got to put it in the atmosphere. And I wanted to be very intentional. I knew this was not going to be a shouting word. I want you to listen because I want every time you open your mouth and you leave here after tonight, I want you to think about whose side you on, about what you say. Hallelujah. We thank God for that word on tonight. I want you to lift your hands and get in your posture wherever you may find yourself. We're going to go right into the prayer. Amen. I can and I will. As she was speaking, as a matter of fact, before, before service, I was sharing with our prayer team about the power of prayer when earth echoes what heaven has said that when earth echoes what heaven has said there is a connection in a symmetry between what is said on earth and what is said in heaven that's why you got to pray the word hallelujah I want God to convict us that our words become less that we only release what we intend on releasing Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word on tonight. I can and I will. God, I found myself in the word to where I spoke some things that I'm dealing with and I created my own barriers. I blame the enemy, but it was really my words that framed it. It was really my doubt that I was thinking and talking out loud and I created and framed those situations. I framed those situations with my children. I framed those situations in my relationships. I framed those situations with my finances, even with my body. I framed those situations. Oh, this happens in my family. Oh, this is in my bloodline. Oh, my mama suffered with this. Tonight, God, it all ceases. I only speak what your word says. I am beginning a new generation in my bloodline. It's a kingdom generation that I only speak what your word says. I'm a mimic and I'm an echo of your word. God, give me the hunger to meditate to sit down and to think about your word hallelujah so that the word out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks I have to fill my heart with your word I have to fill my mind with your word hallelujah because you gave me the ability and the power to create with my word so God even right now I redirect I retool I realign that I only speak what is intended to be spoken in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. No more gossip. No more gossip. No more spiritual gossip. I'm not speaking what your word didn't say. I'm not declaring what your word didn't say. Hallelujah. I'm only saying it because you said it. Hallelujah. I'm not speaking my fears. I'm not speaking my concerns. Forget this junk about keeping it real. I already know what my limitation is, and I don't need to say it. If I say it, I empower it. So God, I speak my deliverance. I speak my healing. 
I speak my breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I don't need to prove to nobody from whence I came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't need to win acceptance from whence I came. I speak breakthrough. I speak healing. I speak wholeness because that's what your word says. You said in your word in Psalm 82, we're like little gods. We have the creative ability to create in our atmosphere. I speak your word. My body is healed. My mind is settled. My heart is regulated. Ah, oh, hallelujah. I am not suicidal. I am not depressed. I am not suffering. I'm healed. I'm whole. And the devil need to hear this. I am happy in the Lord. Hallelujah. So God, I thank you even right now for that word. Hallelujah. That was a vaccination for our spirit. Hallelujah. We thank you for that word. Hallelujah. We're changing what we say. We're not wishing and hoping that you read our minds and look into our hearts and you manifest what we haven't said. You have given us legal authority. So if we say it, it shall be so. Hallelujah. We have that ability because the confidence is not in me. The confidence is in you. Meaning what you said, because if you said it, you're a man that you can't lie or a son of man that you can't repent. I'm just saying what you said. 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 I ain't making up nothing. I'm just saying what you said. Hallelujah. So God, I bless you tonight. I bless you tonight. This is a default change. This is a reprogramming. Hallelujah. My language doesn't come from my flesh. It comes from my spirit. Hallelujah. I speak kingdom. Hallelujah. I pray that my tongue get heavy every time flesh talk comes up. God, I pray that I can't pronounce it when my flesh talk comes up. Give me fluency in your spirit. Give me fluency in kingdom talk. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We celebrate you, God. We celebrate you, God. We celebrate you, God. We celebrate you, God. Power belongs to my words. <laughs> Power belongs to my words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you even right now. And God, I declare I'm walking around my cubicle tomorrow speaking. I'm not nodding. I'm not humming. But I'm going to speak clearly. I'm walking into my house tonight. And I'm speaking kingdom all over my house tonight. I'm speaking kingdom. Hallelujah. I'm going to go to the bank. And I'm going to speak kingdom in the bank in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I give you thanks and praise. Because God, you are good. And God, you have awakened us to our true identity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you didn't just give us unknown tongues, but you gave us new tongues that when we got filled with the Spirit of God, we can't help but speak what your word says. Hallelujah. Them the tongues you need to worry about. <laughs> Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank you and I give you glory because, God, you are good. I don't need 20 years in the kingdom to be successful in this. All I need to do is to change my language. Oh, start meditating. Hallelujah. Stay in the word and speak the word. And I shall have good success. Oh, I thank you. I thank you. Oh, hallelujah. I celebrate you because you're good. And your mercy endures forever. <laughs> Ooh, the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Oh, the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaking the right thing, I give you glory and thanks. In the blessed name of the Lord. I need about 17 saints to bombard the atmosphere with the praise. With some hallelujahs and some glory to God. Hallelujah. And seal this word with the worship right now. I didn't tell you to go ahead and tap. I didn't tell you to nod your head, but I said open your mouth and give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.